Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added to the CCNA course 200-125. And this is section 4.9, Quality of Service. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain the purpose and characteristics of quality service. Examine the Cisco Quality Service. Cisco IOS software provides a range of quality service tools that addresses the needs of voice, video, and data applications. Quality Service is defined as an application of features and functionalities to actively manage and satisfy network requirements of applications sensitive to loss delay and deletion variation, delay variation jitter. Quality service also guarantees the availability of bandwidth for critical application flows. Network managers know that queuing or buffering, not bandwidth, is a primary issue in the campus network. Because more bandwidth you give, is always going to be queuing. The devices are going to always use all the available bandwidth. So you need to understand queuing, not always Increasing the bandwidth is going to solve the problems. Almost any network can take advantage of quality service for optimum efficiency, whether it's a small corporate network, an internet service provider, or enterprise network. Prioritizing traffic. Applications such as voice and live video transmissions create higher expectation for the quality of the delivered services. Congestion occurs when the demand for bandwidth exceeds the amount available. When the volume of traffic is greater than what can be transported across the network, devices queue the packets. If the number of packets uh, to be queued continues to increase, the memory queue fills up and packets are dropped. This is known as a tail drop. So as, as the packets they start going, if there's no, if it's not bandwidth, they're just going to go to the exit interface or egress. If the bandwidth of the interface is, is congested, then the queues are going to start forming. And as the queues increase, then the last package arrives in the queue, they make it dropped. Bandwidth congestion, delay, and jitter. Network bandwidth is measured in the number of bits that can be transmitted in a single second, or bits per second, BPS for short. Network congestion causes the delays. And these examples are first aggregation. Aggregation is, for example, if you are connecting many computers, say uh, end devices, laptops, desktops, phones, and printers, and so on, and then they all 100 megabits per second, and then you transmit into the DLS distribution layer switch, but the bandwidth is the same as these ones. So in there, in here, you're gonna get 500 megabits per second. They're gonna send the data. While you here, you can send only 100 megabits per second. So that's a problem. Another problem is speed mismatch. One side of the of the link is one gigabit, and the other one is 100 Mbps. So 10 times faster. So all the packets, they not gonna, same. Imagine you're using 100 Mbps. Then all the packets they can't travel at the same time. There has to be a queue on this lower. Uh, bandwidth or we have a lo local area network to the wide area network again speed mismatch here or it could be a different different uh, encapsulation type or different uh, interfaces but again you have a 1000 me megabits per second on the LAN on usually in the wide area network we don't have the, the speeds that we have on local area networks end-to-end -end delays end-to-end -end delay and jitter have severe quality impact of the network as follows. End-to-end -end delay is the sum of all types of delays. Each hop in the network has its own set of variable processing and queuing delays, which can result in jet jitter. So there is a, quite a few delays, different type of delays, that we're gonna go through it, but when you add them all together, end-to-end, -to -end, that causes end-to-end -end delay, which is from the source, packet leaving the source, by the time it arrives to the destination, that's the end-to-end -end delay. So different type of delay. The first type of delay is processing delay. This is the time it takes for the router or layer 3 switch to take the packet from the input in interface, ingress, and put the packet into the output interface, egress. Process delay depends on the following factors. We can be CPU speed, CPU use, IP switching mode, 
router arch architecture, configured features on both the input and output interface, like ACLs and so on. So queuing delays is the time the packet resides in the output queue of the router. Queuing delay depends on the number of packets that are already in the queue and the packet sizes. This, could, this is a variable delay. Sometimes the queue is bigger, sometimes smaller, sometimes there is no queue. Serialization delay is the time it takes to, to place a frame on the physical medium for transport. Actually put the frame in the medium so it can actually go outside. And propagation delay is the time that it takes the packet to cross the link from one end to the other. Jitter is the variation in the delays. Different type of quality service models that we have, and we're going to talk about them more on section 4.10, the next section. The first type is best effort services. Pretty much here, there's no quality service. Basic connectivity, no guarantees. It's first in, first out queues. First packet that comes in, first packet is going to go out. Doesn't matter if that packet is FTP or voice packet. Doesn't care. FTP comes first, FTP goes out. Then the voice has to wait for the, all that uh, FTP packet to go through. The second type of quality service model we have is integrated services. This manages traffic on a per flow basis, provides customized services per traffic stream, and end-to-end -end application registration. This is like you need, for example, from the source to destination, we reserve bandwidth for some flow. Differentiated services manages traffic on type of traffic basis. So here we have to mark what type of traffic we have and we give a different quality service for different type of traffic. Does not provide individual stream visibility and implemented per hop. Packet loss, when congestion occurs, routers and switches begin to drop packets. This is known as tail drop or output drop. Occurs when an output queue is full. Tra tail drops are common and happen when a link is congested. Routers may also drop packets for this other less common reason. First, input queue drop. The main CPU is busy and cannot process packet. The input queue is full. Ignore the routers out of buffer space. Overrun, the CPU is busy and cannot assign a free buffer to the new packet. Frame errors, the hardware detects an error in the frame, for example, cyclic redundancy check, CRC, runs, and giants. Runs is a frame that is smaller than allowed minimum size, which is 64 bytes, and giants is a frame that is larger than maximum allowable. Network traffic trends, early 2000, the predominant type of IP traffic were voice and data. More recently, video traffic has become increasingly important to business communication and operations. According to the Cisco Virtual Networking Index VNI, video traffic represents 67% of all traffic in 2014. By 2019, video will represent 80% of the traffic. Mobile video traffic will increase over 600% from 113 and 672 terabytes to 768,334 terabytes. Traffic characteristics. Voice. Voice traffic is predictable and smooth. However, voice is very sensitive to delays and drop packets and it cannot be retransmitted if lost. Voice traffic must receive a higher UDP priority. Voice can tolerate a certain amount of latency, jitter and loss without noticeable effects. So voice is smooth, benign, but it is drop sensitive and delay sensitive and it needs a UDP priority. One way requirement for voice traffic latency lower than or equal to 150 milliseconds, jitter lower than or equal to 30 milliseconds, loss lower than or equal to 1%, bandwidth from 30 to 128 kilobits per second. Video traffic, video traffic tend to be more unpredictable inconsistent and bursty. Video is less resilient to loss and high, has a higher volume of data per packet. Similar to voice, video can tolerate a certain amount of latency, jitter and loss without noticeable effects. Video traffic is bursty, greedy and is still drop sensitive and delay sensitive. It does require UDP priority. 
One way requirement for video traffic is latency equal to or lower than 200 to 400 milliseconds, jitter lower than or equal to 30 to 50 milliseconds, loss lower than or equal to 0.1 to 1 percent, bandwidth 384 kilobits per second up to 20 megabits per second or more. Traffic characteristic for data, data application has no tolerance for data loss such as email and web pages, but they do use TCP to ensure that if a packet are lost in transit, they will be resent. Data traffic can be smooth or bursty. Some TCP applications can be consuming a large portion of network capacity. For example, FTP will consume as much bandwidth as it can get when you download a large file like a movie or a game. So data traffic is a smooth and bursty or bursty, benign, greedy, Drop sensitive, insensitive, drop insensitive, delay insensitive, and TCP retransmits. So first queuing algorithm we're going to talk about, or no queuing algorithm here, is first in first out, or FIFO. The FIFO queuing involves buffering and forwarding of packets in the order of the arrival. FIFO does not recognize priority or classes of traffic. Traffic is sent out in the order it has been received. FIFO which is the fastest method of queuing, is effective for large links that have little delay and minimal congestion. The second type of queuing algorithms that we have is weighted fair queuing. Weighted fair queuing is an automatic scheduling method that provides a fair bandwidth allocation for all network traffic. Weighted fair queuing allows you to give low volumes, interactive traffic such as telnet, sessions, and voice priority over high volume traffic such as FTP sessions. Weighted fair queuing classes, classifies traffic into different flows based on the packet header addressing. Low bandwidth traffic stream receive a preferential services. Class based weighted fair queuing extend the standard or WFQ functionality to provide a support for user defined traffic classes. A FIFO queue is reserved for each class and traffic belongs to a class is directed to the queue for that class. To characterize a class you assign it bandwidth, weight, and maximum packet limit. The bandwidth assigned to a class is the guaranteed bandwidth delivered to the class during congestion. So here we create any classes. Each class will become first in, first out queue. And then, for example, we, the important traffic we put in class one, and they will go out first. And then less important traffic, class two, and we are defining different classes for different types of traffic. Low latency queuing, this is the best queuing for uh, voice packets. For example, what it brings a strict priority queuing, class-based weighted fair queuing. For example, we have class-based weighted fair queuing, but we implement a priority queuing, which all the packets, they're going to be, st uh, or like voice packets, they're going to go in a, this class. And the priority queuing will be serviced first before any other queues are serviced. Until the prior, until this class it is serviced and it's empty, then we look at other classes. With LLQ, delay sensitive da data is sent first before packets in other queues are treated. Low latency queuing allows delay sensitive data such as voice to be sent first before packets in other queues, giving delay sensitive data preferential treatment over other traffic. Although it is possible to enqueue various type of real time traffic to the strict priority queue. Cisco does recommend that only voice traffic be directed to this because this queue will be emptied before other queues are used. So this queue will be serviced first until there's no more packets on this queue before we even think of going to other classes. So quality of service commands show interface G00, for example. And now we can see that by default, we have the queuing strategy, which is FIFO. First in, first out. If we want to create a priority queuing, what do we do? First, we define nexus list for different type of, of flows or different type of protocols that we want to use. So define access list to match the traffic. For example, access list 101 says permit UDP protocol any going to this network. 102 permits TCP protocol any, any uh, source going to this destination and then the rest you can see it. And then what we do is we create a priority list. So priority list one, protocol IP, 
and high, we put this on the high priority, access list 101, so list 101. Medium priority, access list 102. Normal priority, 103. And low priority, 104. By default, it's the normal, in the normal priority is the default, but in here we are putting in the low, in the low list. And then we go to the interface, we say priority group one, which you assign, we say, okay, well, we're gonna prioritize, for example, UDP packets, they're gonna be treated with a high priority, the TCP with a medium priority, any IP packets with a normal priority, and ICMP packets, they're gonna go to the low priority. So now when we do uh, show queue in priority to monitor the priority queue, or if you run the command show interface G00, same command again, now we will say the queuing strategy is priority list. Priority list one, and then you have to access, you have to look at that, what is linked to, what is binded to. If you want to make class-based queuing, first what we have to do is we define the classes. What traffic are we concerned with? Each class of traffic is defined using a class map. So we start with class map, global configuration mode, and we say match all voice. We match into IP pre precedence 5. Then class match all FTP, match protocol FTP. So we are creating classes. We match in all. So class voice, this is just the name that we are given. And we are matching with anything that has been marked with precedence 5. And here we are matching anything all FTP traffic with the protocol FTP. Then we create a policy map, which says policy map CCNA, for example. So define quality service policies for classes. What will be done to this traffic? So policy map is the name of our policy. For the class voice, which matches the precedence 5, we give it bandwidth 1024. For class FTP that matches this, we be bandwidth 128. And then we put it on the interface. So interface gigabit 00, service hyphen policy, output CCNA. Apply a service policy. Where will this policy be implemented? Attaches a service policy configured with a policy map to an interface. If you run the command show interface G00, now it will say the queuing strategy class-based queuing. This is a bit more extra information how to configure because in curriculum of the CCNA routing and switching, they're not going to ask you how to configure quality of service. Thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.